So we're, uh, we're over here in Somerville, Georgia, uh, and we're at the warehouse we use for staging the uh, MERT equipment, which is the Motorola Emergency Response Team. And every year we do a, a training event where the whole team gets together and we prep for the 2023 hurricane season. This is our third year doing this. This is Mr. Parker right here. He's the guy that owns the warehouse and helps uh, support the, the Motorola Emergency Response Team. Um, so we're just going to talk a little bit about what we're going to do this year. Uh, and to start out with, like I said, it's a, it's a week-long event. And uh, we go through inventory. We're loading equipment and trailers. We do a lot of training. Um, I think the train we have lined up for tomorrow morning, that's with the uh, emergency room doctor that's doing right. mm -hmm. first aid medical uh, exactly, trauma care. Exactly. You know, we could run into anything in the field, and we often forget, you know, that when we run into theater, everybody makes fun of me for saying theater, but when we run into the event, you know, we may, we may drive the last three or 400 miles, there's no gas, there's no resources, everybody's evacuated, right. and we're down there and we're kind of dependent on each other. And so, you know, one of the things that we added to our team last year was getting some medical training up to speed. And so we thought we'd add the Motorola guys in. Yeah. And, you know, it's just uh, kind of like emergency medicine, you know, tourniquets, uh, bandages, things that could happen in the field so that we could like help stabilize and, and, and have a plan to evacuate. You know, one of the things that you added last year that we did is we took the time in our safety briefing every day before we went out is we knew where the nearest hospital that was right. operating was. We knew you know what it was and so that's kind of important so um, and then as we were wrapping up our video at the end of last year we talked about kind of the preparation you know we was talking about loading the trailers up to leave mm -hmm. and how the trailers just don't load themselves so today I thought we'd just sort of go yeah, to the yeah the commitment that Motorola's made to get all the stuff together and then logistically and then it gives a good chance for our team and your team to work together exactly a couple of years ago we did some first aid CPR training uh, every year we would try to have some kind of safety training uh, there's going to be some uh, training on uh, vehicle safety and, and driving. Uh, we're going to have some uh, team building events where we actually do some work together to try to function as a team. So uh, that's really the goal. And there's, uh, like I said, it's a week-long event. Yeah. We all work together and uh, kind of prep for the, the 2023 hurricane season. It's a beautiful weather today. Oh, it's, it's like, what, great. 65 degrees, something it's like beautiful. that? beautiful. And this in what, what day is this? You told us April 17th. April That's 17th. Monday, April 17th. And so hurricane season, if you remind everybody, typically starts in June. That's correct. Goes through June through November. That's yep. right. And so we typically don't see hurricanes until kind of the end of August, September. Yep. But, you know, they can they can start earlier. So it gives us a chance to get everything ready. That's Why right. Why don't we walk in here and see what's going on yeah, with the guys? Good. Yeah. So this is the uh, warehouse. And it's not just for the emergency response team. This is actually a working business. And uh, we just use some of the space to store some of our equipment and, and uh, work with David Parker and his company, uh, Parker Services. But it's handy because we have some of the things like those guys are building a, a protection sleeve to go around an antenna. And so that, that's super handy. That's right. You know, over here we got a couple of guys programming some radios, getting some stuff ready to go. Yep, we're Which loading, is, uh, we have a new inventory system. We uh, incorporated into our tool this year and and that is the part of the event this week is to take all that equipment and transfer it from the old system to the new system yeah um, just a lot of uh, a lot of equipment and it's already what eight o'clock at night yeah we've had dinner, so, had when dinner. We went out. yeah and it's a, it's a good chance to to learn about the gear yep. and over the year from last hurricane you know, we've made some upgrades to the sleeping trailers. We've got some great uh, videos about that. So we're walking by. This is one of our emergency response vehicles that we use. That's right. It's a diesel uh, GMC pickup truck. It's a three-quarter ton truck that's equipped to be able to pull some of the generators that we use for deployment. You can haul equipment, antennas on top. It's set up with a complete radio system, uh, four-wheel drive, all the light package, so there's visibility. Emergency that, lighting. Emergency lighting. That, that kind of helps for our visibility. Yeah. Yep. And I think you outfitted them with a lot of extra fuel, so we, we get that range. We yep. did. It's uh, it, we changed the uh, fuel tank to basically give us a thousand miles of distance before we have to refill. This so, is one of our uh, fuel tankers that we use on deployment. One of the things that we did this year is how many, how many gallons is this, Parker? Uh, Ninety-six hundred gallons. Ninety-six hundred gallons. Okay. In, f in four compartments. So if you add up the different compartments, so we you know we have uh, diesel vehicles like he says and gas and diesel for the generator so we're able to carry in the gas and the diesel right. in the tank yep. and, we, and we have enough. When we first started doing this and 
one of the things we did as logistics support is I had to dedicate one guy and a car and a, I mean a truck and a little tr small trailer and some of those portable transfer tanks and then That's we right. literally ran back and forth every day. 115 to get gallon tanks, you'd fill them up at a gas station. The problem when you go in uh, after a hurricane, a lot of times the gas stations that are within 100 miles or more are out of fuel because Everybody's trying to exit the area and they're filling up their cars and trucks. And so there's, there's no gas no, There's left. no fuel. I would so. literally have a guy, that's his whole job. He would drive four or five hours out of theater, yep. get fuel and drive back in. Yep. And then he'd turn around and do that same thing again. Yep. Well, and one of the things, Dave, I don't know if you've seen this that we've upgraded this year is we've got, we got uh, new storage and racks. And then like, this is a 3,600 gallon containment berm that we place under these loading heads. So if we have any kind of spills or anything, we have it contained. Yep. So that's kind of a neat upgrade that we've done this year. That's yeah. nice. So you added these boxes, basically. Yeah. These are custom these, made? Yeah, we were, you know, they're they're made for tankers and we custom added them to the trailer to have yeah. more. But we have our pig, pig mats, which is a spill containment device. Those things are pretty special. If you spill like a little bit of diesel fuel and water, you can put that pad in it, it gets the diesel fuel and leaves the water. Oh, really? Yeah, and they make a gray one. I might get it backwards. The gray ones will get the water and the diesel fuel, and the white ones just get the fuel. Okay. They're kind of selective that yeah. way. We have our pumps. We've upgraded this year to an Anderson connector yeah. so that the electrical part's safe because we create like a portable gas station here. Exactly. We have a diesel pump and a gas pump. So it's a fueling station. What happens is uh, we, once we get to where we're going to set up the stage, uh, last year was in Florida and uh, in, after Hurricane Ian, and we don't rely on having a gas station having fuel, and so we bring our fuel with us. And like David Parker said, we, we set up a, basically a gas pump, and trucks come in at the end of the day, we top off their tanks, and uh, you know, if, whether you're gas or diesel. So, right. And we're able to function for seven to 10 days. Right, our generators, our big trucks. That's right. I think, you know, Stephen did a great video for us where he talked about one of the things that we got to do if we're going to move a lot of people and a lot of equipment a great distance is we need a lot of fuel. Yep. So what's going on right here, Dave? So these are actually some uh, used antennas that we're checking out. And all these antennas have been tested. And so you put a very special piece of equipment on them, you sweep them. We do. It's actually a, a, a process we go through. We, we sweep the band width of that particular antenna to make sure that it is passing correctly. Right. And then we document if it's a pass fail. And we do that with the used antennas. We don't necessarily have to do that with the new ones, but right. if you have a used one, you want to make sure it works. These are kind of a, a last minute uh, like kind of a last resort. Last resort. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Obviously, we try to carry new equipment, but there's so many people don't realize. You know, you guys deal with 800 megahertz, 700 megahertz. VHF. VHF. Which is UHF, 150 megahertz. 450 megahertz. megahertz. Yeah, it's there's a and, and in each in each of those ranges, there's different antennas that meet certain criteria. Right. Because I always I always joke where they say that the the antenna gains 9 dB. You know, it doesn't have an amplifier in it. It just no. squashes the pattern down. That's right. And so right. you have antennas that make fingers and you have antennas that make yeah. a basketball look like a you know all kinds of things typically the taller the antenna the greater the gain so okay. it could be a 9 db gain antenna and it just gives you more focus where you need it to go exactly yep and, th and this is a trailer that that we added three or four years ago again that allows us to take the specialized gear that we need to support the um the effort right dave so what's really interesting about this is this is what they call a reefer trailer and basically what that means is it's, it's designed to haul produce or meat or whatever. And there's little air conditioning units in here. And you can subdivide this and, and you know, you can haul milk or produce or whatever. And uh, it, the thing that's nice about this is it's insulated. So it has insulated walls. And um, it's important because uh, it's a little more soundproof and everything. But we use this to haul a lot of our equipment when we're going to the deployment. I've, if you look on this uh, in, right here in front of me, this is our uh, coax or heliax. This is a half inch cable. These are 500 foot rolls of cable. This is an inch, uh, I'm sorry, this is seven eighths inch cable. We have 5,000 feet of the half inch cable and 3,000 feet of the seven eighths inch cable. Once we finish loading up, we'll have some larger cable over here as well. So we're in the process of taking things out, inventorying it. These are some new antennas that are larger gain. Some larger cables over here. Uh, we have some quick kits that we use, we deploy uh, hardware. These are spare repeater parts for the GTR repeaters. Um, we have microwave equipment for point-to-point -point operations, point-to-point -point hops. And then we kind of like a little hardware store. So if you walk in here and you say, okay, I need to get, uh, I need to get some half-inch connectors. So we know everything that's on these shelves. We know by part number, 
type of, of uh, connector it is, but this tells us kind of where it's located in this shelf. Everything for half inch cables here, everything for inch and a quarter is over here. Seven eighths, eighths inch, seven eighths inch connectors are back there, and inch and five eighths are here. Um, and that's a new thing that they just did this year, Dave. I've, I've been here. They, they've got a barcode and they add it to the outside if they don't use the manufacturer's barcode. Yep. This trailer's zoned. You can scan it and say, hey, go to the half inch, to the mobile unit one, to shelf three, yep. and it tells you where it is. You know, Home Depot has that app on their phone too. That's cool. Yeah. And so now we have it. That's pretty We amazing. also have a camera system in here, Ubiquity uh, cameras. It's uh, tied into a, a, a network that we have when we're at a base camp. And uh, so we can monitor for safety to see what's going on around us. Uh, Keep and then, track of if we forgot the inventory of an item or whatever. Exactly. And then this is something that you added last year. You want to talk about this? Yeah, this is pretty cool. So we, you know, one of the things that, that when we go into theater again that we need is we need um, our ice and we need our food and we need all this. So this front area, we keep it at 34 degrees. And so we put the ice in bags and coolers. And last year we were able, we were able to take in about 80 bags of ice and that worked out for our team for yep. about 10 days. So it really worked out yep. well. And then we also keep our drinks in here. So if we keep our drinks pre-killed at 34 degrees, our water, our Powerade, you know, Cokes, drinks. And if you've ever watched one of our videos, you know, we like somebody that drinks Dr. Pepper. Um, so we have all that stuff that we can put in here and this room will stay 34 degrees and it kept our ice the entire 10 days. That's right. It was pretty fantastic. Yeah, and I think you actually added a wall. You subdivided mm -hmm. this the front end right. of this trailer. That's right. And built this wall, which is insulated, and a door. And then the door. So it just makes it yep. easier because we were fighting through those old uh, foam foam kind of dividers. Exactly. Well, Dave, one of the reasons it's so important, I guess, to have this trailer is because what happens, Motorola, they do a great job of building your shelters. It can take a 200 mile an hour wind. Your tower structures can take a 200 mile an hour wind. But it seems like you're really focusing on antennas, lines, and the hardware. I think that stuff tends to blow off around 100 miles an hour, doesn't it? So, uh, you know, think about your house. Uh, you, if you have a 100 plus mile an hour wind that comes through, it doesn't have to be a tornado, it could just be a straight line winds. It's going to tear shingles off your roof and damage things around your house, maybe take siding off and so forth. The house is going to be there, but typically the, the, the structure will function, be there, yep. you know, most time, unless it's, uh, you know, depending on the design, but, but it can hold up to that. The towers can withstand the wind, but you start hanging antennas and lines and these microwave dishes, which are just a, a, a radome, uh, it's used to, uh, for the tower sites to communicate with each other, uh, that stuff comes off. I yeah. mean, you get 100 plus miles an hour yeah. and a lot, it'll strip that stuff off the tower. And that's kind of interesting because that's, that's the, the metric that we kind of deploy on it. You know, when we see a storm coming in and we see that it's going to be over a Cat 3, mm -hmm. it kind of we get our, our antenna up a little bit higher yeah. than on, on a, the lower storms because yeah. the, the systems tend to survive through the Cat 1 and 2s, yeah. but the Cat 3 actually does the damage. And, and then at the same time, the, the terrestrial-based infrastructure gets messed up. It does. And yeah. so you lose your T1s, you lose your fiber, you lose all your terrestrial stuff, and then, like you said, the microwave paths go away. And yeah. so that's when we come in. And that, right. I think that's a great commitment that Motorola does to their customer yeah. to go back in there and uh well we try to do that i don't, I don't know of another company communications company that does that and, no, uh, I, it's, you, uh, you don't you're you're so polite you don't say it but i but i can say it as a logistics supplier you know we're typically in day zero to day right. one and, and the reason we're, we're in day zero is, is because, because we're here this week exactly this we'll trailer will be loaded by the end of the week it'll be every, uh, tires are checked uh, everything fueled up ready to go and when we get the phone call it says we need to roll we can roll within 24 hours we're ready to go that's right. And 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 then and a lot of times we even roll at a greater amount of time than that because now, you know, the National Hurricane Center they do a great job of letting us know when yeah. a greater than Cat Three storm is going to come. You guys have your uh, analysis tools now where you know where your customer's equipment is, and so if if an area is in jeopardy, we're ready to go. It's rewarding because you know that what we do makes a difference. Yeah. It's exciting because you get to work with a bunch of professionals that are passionate about what we do, and uh, it's. It's really exhilarating that, to see um, the effect that we have and how we're able to help out communities. If you think about it, um, the, your local city or town that you live in, the police, the fire, uh, their ambulance service, they rely on communications to talk and to dispatch help to get to where you're located. Absolutely. And when, that's, when that equipment's down, um, they, it limits their ability to respond. So People forget the cell phones are down, they're down. That's right. And, and we talk about 911 centers running cards. That means that somebody has to take the call, 
Right. If it's a, what, what, communication's up, or people literally drive to the station and give them, they write a card down and they pass it around, they have to dispatch a truck and go out. Y'all really do save lives. I mean, sure. it, you know, you can, yeah. if you get that communication turned back up for them, yeah. now they can, you know, take a real assessment of, of what's going on yeah. and keep people safe. One of the things, too, that uh, I know you're talking about the, the damage to the, the antennas and lines and towers, but uh, we've been in, uh, the last two hurricanes, uh, we've had sites that were flooded. Uh, they may even have been ele elevated for some reason, but the, the storm surge was so high that it that it washed out the equipment in the building. So we carry spare parts so we can rebuild that site with equipment. You know, it normally would take weeks to get that equipment. We have it with us. Yeah. And, well, and then and we have generators. Well, the, we, we, do the, generators. we do the generators. We turn the power on. Right. You guys, you know, uh, some of the other guys. That we have electricians see, that go with us. Right. You know? Well, and they and they do, they do pass studies and put in temporary pass yeah. that take months. That's right. You know, like if, you, if you're building a new system and you guys put a path in, it might take six or eight months. You do the pass study. You get the Pharrell yeah. zones. You look at all that stuff. Yeah. You know, and, and, and we, we might do that overnight. We triage and respond as rapidly as possible. We yep. assess the situation, figure out what's wrong, and try to get the customer back on, on the air as quickly as possible. I think That's it's really excellent that, that we highlight that in the video because it's that commitment that we're making now. That's right. Three, four months before the storm that makes yeah. a difference during the storm. Yeah. yeah, so Dave, that's pretty cool, the, the trucks that you guys upgraded. I think this was something that y'all added just last year. We did, yeah. Um, we, we've got a couple of the sleeping trailers here. Let's briefly talk about those. When we go in to help a customer, or an agency after a hurricane, we as always assume that there is no power, there's no fuel, food, or a place to sleep. So knowing that, we, per we prepare and plan ahead to bring everything we need to support a team of 30 people for seven to 10 days with the ability to back support them logistically right. for a longer period if needed. One of the things we do is the sleeping trailers. This is another one of those. Is, is this a reefer trailer? Yeah, okay. they're all, yeah. So, uh, and probably this is more important to have it re refrigerated, insulated, I should say, because we've got guys that are sleeping there and we're going to air condition it or heat it. And uh, this is a 53 foot trailer. That's correct. How wide is that? Somewhere? They're eight and a half, 102, so, eight and a half feet. Yeah. The legal limit, you know, that, the, that a big truck could be. Yeah. And, you know, we picked that platform. And I, I kind of to piggyback on something that David just said is one of the commitments that, that Motorola has to, to the customer and that we don't want to do, and we talk about this all the time, when we go into theater and we go into the affected areas, we are, we are very specifically designing our response so that we're not a burden on the, on the folks that are there. They don't you know, need to lend a hand to help us. That's right. We're there to help them. We're, we're there to help them. That's right. And, and a lot of times those guys, they, you know, they're going to do their staging and planning and they forget that their own homes are gone. That's right. You know, many times we're working alongside folks that come back into our camp and eat with us where they're, they're out there getting the community back online that's right. and their house has been destroyed. Exactly. Their mother's house is gone, their family, you know, because this is their community. So I, I really appreciate the commitment that Motorola's made with helping us design these trailers and us putting them together so that when we go in, we're not a burden on folks. So there's, there, it's, it's like a heavy duty camper, if you think about exactly. it. Exactly. On a truck platform. Exactly. And it, it is, uh, how many gallons of? Uh, yeah, so that's a great example. You know, a typical RV that we could get that has like a bunkhouse might have 100 gallons of fresh water. 120, 140 would be a if lot. If you're lucky, yeah. Yeah, so we have 880. Yeah. gallons of fresh water. Right. We have 880 gallons of black and gray storage. Right. So we can eat, we can actually be self-sufficient for two to three days without any physical hookups. Correct. So yeah. we can, you know, we can go in and then if we have that and we can tell the guys, you know, maybe we take an army shower, a three minute shower, yep. we might could extend that to five days That's right. with our full team. You full know. air conditioning, full, yeah, yeah, generators air conditioning, on it. Generator. It's fully self-contained. Yeah, and we have them pretty well laid out so in camp that they can they can support what they do. In the back of this one, it can have, uh, it's got an office area, uh, and then in the front of it, it sleeps 15 people, so you can get two in the back of this one. This one has 12. You see here, the door's open. Uh, you, you see our instant hot water heater, our 80 kW generator that powers the whole camp. So we uh, have two of these. That's right. All right, and then, and then the uh, tractors that pull these trailers are also sleeping trailers. 
Right. So they uh, have they have bunks for our guys. The drivers can sleep in those. Mm -hmm. So the oh. so our drivers stay in there so it doesn't impact the space and then we usually have three support pickup trucks that we go because we do the electrical support yeah. and the electrician support. Have tire the other crews, logistic technicians, yep. uh, right. at, uh, field service techs, system technologists. So sure. our, our goal is that they're going to work on average 15 to 18 hours a day. And when they get back, we want to make sure, well, before they leave, we want to make sure they're fed, they have breakfast. Yep. And uh, we have a guy that cooks, has breakfast ready every morning for everybody. And then they leave out. We provide them with a cooler full of sandwich, uh, lunch meat and bread and everything. And they're gone all day. Our, our teams are out all day working on these sites. And sometimes they get back at eight o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. Yep. There's a meal ready for them. And they've got a nice, uh, uh, a nice place they can take a shower, get something to eat and get a good night's sleep and start all over the next day. That's right. Yep. And, it's, and it's so important. And it's safe. Yeah. That's the neat thing about it. Well, and that's, and that's one thing that, that we did. I mean, when we first started this, you know, those, those tower guys, man, they're, they're up those towers 800, 1,000, 1,200 feet. Some climbing. of the hardest working guys I know. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they came back and, you know, they were sleeping in their pickup trucks. And, That's right. You know, we couldn't get hotels and those kind of things. So and, and this was a And commitment. they don't mind doing it. I mean, yeah, they, they, no, they, they want to do it because oh, they want to help. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, sleep, I, it's, that's the way it is. And so it, it's, what we've done is invest in some uh, better accommodations. Uh, it's, it's safer as far as the fuel transportation goes. And we provide a, a, a safe base camp that uh, everybody can return back to and uh, get some rest for the next day to work. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate uh, yeah, it you, was... you doing that video with us. I mean, yeah. it's uh, super interesting to um, maybe let everybody see what we're doing and uh, you guys coming up and the commitment that you, that Motorola makes supporting your customers, you know, that are going to be impacted by these hurricanes, floods, tornadoes, whatever it is, you know, we're, we stand ready to do that. So I really appreciate you guys, the commitment that you put into it. You know, I'm, I'm grateful that y'all let us be the logistics support, but I'll tell well, you what, I'll tell you what, David, uh, without Parker services, it'd be difficult to do this. Well, I appreciate um, that. Very, very challenging. It's a lot of work. And I'll tell you a little something. Um, this guy here who's been around for a long time, doing a lot of storms, uh, he's got a passion for it. He loves what we're doing. He likes to help out the community and customers. And uh, I can give a phone call to him and say, hey, we're, we're thinking about, can we build a, thinking about maybe a, a way to store antennas in a, 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 under the trailer, or we need to design a better bracket to hold something. And this guy, not only is an engineer, but he figures out how to do that and he's excited about it. And he just, it's, it's part of the team, really passionate about it. Well, and I, I personally thank you for that. I appreciate it. Well, that's nice of you to say, Dave. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and one of the things that we, we got a lot of good interest on the uh, Sanibel video that we were doing. And, and one of the cool things is now, you know, we're doing these videos and doing it. And folks have been contacting us and want a little more detail, a little more hands-on and that yeah. kind of stuff. So, you know, we encourage folks that if they like these videos, maybe they could, you know, subscribe. Or, you know, another thing that helps is just a comment. Or if you find this video interesting in any way, send it to one or two of your friends. and you know, help us get our subscription up a little bit and kind of yeah. tell people what to do. You know, one of the things that folks really liked was they were able, we took them right in the hurricane. We were, we took Stephen with us this year, That's right. you know, Stewart and those guys got figured out with Starlink that we could get on board with that. So now we've got kind of ubiquitous internet coverage and our reports were as, as good as the weather channel in That's a lot right. of cases That's because right. Stephen was doing daily videos and we were doing daily uploads and our information was as fresh and as good as anybody. So if you subscribe, you, you know, can, you got a, a kind of a wind into the hurricane season. You know, it's interesting because, uh, you know, our, our families, our wives, our kids, they know that what we do, they hear about that, that we're out helping customers and, and uh, trying to restore communications. But those videos actually gave them a, uh, a new insight, an insight to it where they didn't, you, I could talk about it, but a video or a picture is worth a thousand words. So it's, you could see the, the guys coming off a barge with yeah, all equipment, yeah. somebody climbing a tower, and what we had to do to get a generator started, and, and the it, challenges it, we ran into, and so I, 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 to me, they're enjoyable. Yeah. So if you like it, you know, do, you know, help us out. Comment about the video, or like send it to one person. There you go. Yep. There you go. Thank you. Thanks for watching.